Hi and welcome to this video about user management. Based on the previous videos about LDAP and um, OpenID Connect integration with OAuth, in this video I'm going to show you how you can configure a resource server uh, with Flowable. Therefore, I'm going to use the project which I have used uh, also in the previous videos and I'm going to add this feature in addition. So what does resource server actually mean? Uh, when you go to Flowable uh, in the browser, you get the login page. However, when you would like to do a REST call, then uh, you need to authenticate somehow. Just open IDM API account user on my local Flowable installation. I get a 401 unauthorized bag and I would like to have some authentication in here. And there you typically use OAuth2 and for example, you could use the client credentials workflow. Now to use the client credentials workflow, uh, you need to specify basically how those client uh, secrets and so on are generated. Therefore, we need to configure first of all a client which is supposed to connect to since those are typically technical users. So let's go back to our um, key cloak where we can create a new client. So let's call this client flowable client in case uh, you have an application, you typically name it as the application you like to connect. And this has now client authentication enabled and is just a service account role. So once added, I can now go ahead and here configure client. That client here has credentials and we can actually just use them. And uh, here I have a password, which I am going to add over here as my client secret. The client ID is the name of our client. And with that, we can um, request an access token. Now that request requested an access token, we can directly use over here. And it also has uh, basically some content inside. To look at what content we have, we can go, for example, to jwt.io. And here we see basically the default structure which we have in the to uh, token. Now there's nothing identifying our user in here, maybe basically except the uh, client ID or the preferred username. And that is why we need to go ahead and map additional configuration about the permissions into our token. Therefore I go ahead and um, uh, just add a role. So we would like to have a specific role which is telling us the permissions of that user. Now there are a few default permissions and uh, those you can basically use based on the authorities uh, inside here. So when we look at actually our developer guide backend and then in the developer guide security, we see here at the top the naming of how those authorities can look like. So we can, for example, use user definition key underscore and then a user definition which is available in our system to give them permissions. Furthermore, we could also use the group underscore to give them permissions. But when we use user definition keys, we can specify automatically the group as well in which we are supposed to be. Now for each uh, of those authorities which you would like to have, you need to create a role. And this role we can now go ahead and assign uh, to our client. So when I go ahead here, I can now assign a new role uh, as a service account role. So here it's important that you are in service account roles and then have the newly created role in here. Now let's go back to Postman and uh, just generate a new token. So let's say uh, get access token, proceed. We have now this new token. And when we take that token to jwt.io, we see over here we have now in roles uh, that new role. Now those roles are mapped below real access roles and we would like to have them on the top level which makes it easier uh, to fetch them and that we can configure. Either you configure it globally uh, with the client scope which is responsible for roles or you add a new one uh, that is uh, completely up to you. I will add or, or change that client scope which we have over here. So let's go to roles in here. And in the mapper over here, 
uh, we have realm walls and when I click on that I see that this is below realm access.roles and I just remove that and say the token claim name is on roles and then generate a new token obviously since the old token uh, will not change automatically. I can go ahead and uh, use this token as is and uh, basically go with that token back to jwt.io uh, and just add it here and we see now we have on the top level roles. The only thing which I still need to do that I don't uh, receive basically that for one unauthorized over here is to configure my flowable application that it is also accepting this token. And therefore we need to go ahead and enable JWT. Now to enable JWT we need to do uh, three different things. First of all we need to have the Spring Boot dependency for JWT integrated. Next we need to go ahead and uh, change our Java configuration in case we, uh, we are having a customization project. Actually when you are using the out of the box images both of that is done for you. Uh, to also enable JWT and then lastly we need to uh, configure it in the application properties. So let's start with the um, dependency over here and therefore I'm going back to the documentation where below OAuth you might remember that from the last video I just took the top dependency now let's take the bottom dependency and add that one as well. So when we have that over here and we have um, this dependency in there. And we can now say here HTTP or to resource server JWT to enable it. The only thing missing, and that's actually also the only thing which you need to do uh, when you are using the out of the box image is to add our properties. Again, we can find them, uh, for example, here in our eCloak guide. And there we can go to the resource server section and uh, simply copy them. And um, back here we see, okay, that's the real access or issue URI, which is used as a base. It's actually the same, which we have here at the top. Principal claim name is our preferred username. When you recall our JWT token, we have the preferred username here, a service account flowable client. So that will work. And then uh, we have the authority attributes, which is roles that map, maps actually exactly to what we have configured now with it's over here. And we have then groups, uh, which we don't have in our token yet. So they are not going to be applied. Same for the tenant attribute and user definition key attribute. In case you would like to have them, you obviously can go ahead and configure your token that it includes those specific attributes and then they are also accepted by Flowbo and used by Flowbo inside the token. Now I'm restarting right now my Flowbo work that we can try that out and then we are going to see basically that I can authenticate with that technical user and uh, use then my REST endpoints without going through the typical OpenID connect flow, which we have normally. We actually see here that this one now crashed because of the resolver. And the reason is because I did not refresh my Maven dependencies, which then is a pointer that our Maven dependencies are not up to date and we do not have the capability of uh, using it as a resource server. So let's just restart it uh, one more time and then we are going to see that I can now sign in with my um, client credentials to the server. This time hopefully it works. So it's starting up the database right now. Uh, doing uh, migration checks and once that is then done, uh, we see that the application is started. And starting from this point, uh, we can simply press execute in our postman since everything else, our token is still valid from a few seconds ago. So let's go here to postman and press send. We see we receive now a 200 
okay. We have here the ID of our client and we have um, our user definition key user admin and that provides us next to the allowed features which are not that important to us. Also the member groups uh, like global user and global administrator. Obviously not each service account is supposed to be an administrator but that you can control on your own by providing different roles. Uh, you might want to use this token actually when you are connecting Flowable Control or Flowable Design to your Flowable uh, Work installation. So that's one common use case or in case you have another microservice you would like to integrate with and use a technical token therefore. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.